So in this video, we're going over uh, how to solve equations using the zero product property. Now this becomes really useful when we get into quadratics later on. Um, it's rather a simple concept, so the video probably isn't gonna be very long, um, but it is extremely, extremely important to understand how this works because of, of its later uses when we get into quadratics. So what the zero product property is, and I'll, I'll show you what's on the screen in a second, but let me kind of talk you through it. So basically, if you have two things, let's say A times B, right? A is some number and B is some number, and you multiply them together, right? A times B, some number times some number. And you know for a fact that the result is zero, that you multiply these two numbers together and the answer is zero. Something must be true about one of these numbers, and that is that one of them has to be zero. There's no way that you can multiply two numbers together and have the answer be zero unless one of those numbers was already zero. So this is a very important fact. It's sort of like uh, solving a mystery in a way, you know, because we don't know what these numbers are, but we do know that because of their results, that one of them or both of them could be zero. And we're going to use that to our advantage when, I'm tr when we're trying to solve equations for x. So this is basically what I just wrote down, what I explained. So that's the more like, I guess, textbook way of presenting it. But that is what the zero product property is. So how do we use this? How do we solve an equation like this? OK, so I have. Uh, this problem in front of me, I've got two components here. I've got this here, the x plus 7, and it's being multiplied to the second component, x minus 21. Now, these two things are being multiplied together, and the result is 0. So I know that one of them must be equal to 0. Now, our goal is uh, to find out any x value that would make the solution equal 0. Now, there's actually two x values that would make this equation equals zero. So there are two answers for this because there is one x value that will make this first part zero, and we want to know what that x value is. But there's a different x value that would make that second piece zero. We also want to know what that is. We want to know all the possibilities that could result in this equation being zero. So how do we do this? Well, it's pretty straightforward, actually. So we take each component. So let's take x plus 7, right? and just straight up set it equal to zero so that I can figure out what x value would make this result in zero. So I set that equation up, I solve for x, I would just subtract the seven on both sides and I would get the answer x equal to negative seven. So that is one solution because if I plug in negative seven for x, I would have negative seven plus seven, you know, negative seven minus 21, Let's get rid of that arrow. Equal to zero. Or, and then so we would realize that this part here is zero. So no matter what that number is, that number actually ends up being negative 28. It doesn't matter what it is, though, because we're multiplying it with zero. And since we're multiplying it with zero, that's how we get zero as a result. But we have another solution. We have the solution for the other component. We have the solution for this. So how do we figure it out? the exact same way. We take that uh, piece, that x minus 21, we set that equal to zero to figure out what x value would this be for that whole thing to be end up equaling zero. So we solve it, we would add 21 to both sides, and we would have the result x equal to positive 21. So that's, two, that's our two solutions, because if you plug in that 21 in for x, you would have 21 plus 7, which is 28, not important, but you'd have 21 minus 21, and so this would be 28 times 0, so because that 21 makes this 0, it doesn't matter what this is because we're multiplying it with 0, that's what's going to make the result 0. So that's two possibilities. Plugging in negative 7 turns this first part into 0, thus the whole thing into 0, and 21 turns the second piece into zero again, doing the same thing, turning the whole equation equal to zero. So remember, yes, only one of them would have to be zero for it to be true, but your goal is to find out all the possibilities that would make that occur. 
So they, these are the two possibilities that would make zero the solution here. Um, so that's how we use the zero product property to help us solve for X. Um, let's look at another one, right? So again, I see the same thing. I've got these two components. I've got this one here and then the three X minus 21. So I'm going to do the same exact process. I'm going to uh, look at each of them. So let's look at the first one, two X minus 12 and set them equal to zero so I can solve them and figure out what the X value is. I'll also do the same thing for the three X minus 21. I'll set it up equal to zero and I'll solve for that X as well. And then I'll have my two solutions, my two different X values that would make the equation zero. So the first part, if I solve it, add 12 to both sides, we would have two X equal to 12. And then I would divide by two and I would have X equal to six. So that is one solution. If you plug six in, then this first piece will be zero, thus multiplying it, everything else, turning everything else into zero. But let's see what the other piece gives us. The other piece, you would add 21 to both sides. This results in three X equal to 21. Then dividing by three, we would have X equal to seven. So there's your other solution. If you use seven in the second equation or the second piece, I should say, then that piece will turn into zero. Thus, again, everything else turning into zero because it's being multiplied to it all. You, again, you multiply zero to anything, you get zero as a result. So there's um, just another example. Now, example three throws a little bit of a curveball in here because you've got uh, some numbers on the outside. But I'll go ahead and tell you, because the answer is zero, these numbers are basically useless. Um, so think of it like this, right? You have this component here and you have this component here. You have four times something times three times something. All of this is being multiplied together. So if that part is zero, the entire thing is also going to be zero. And same thing on the other part. If that part is zero, then the whole thing will be zero because it's all being multiplied together. This times this times this times zero wouldn't matter, still end up being zero because the whole because you have you're multiplying a zero to it. So what I'm trying to say is just try to figure out what makes this equal zero and also what makes this equal zero. Because in short, four times zero would still be zero. So the four is essentially going to be useless. And the three times the zero, again the three would be essentially useless. So they're not really necessary. Um, they're kind of in there. You can use them. There's nothing wrong with using them. If you want to distribute and do all that, you can and then solve. You will still get the answer, but you're just creating more work for yourself. So to make this simple, we just need to figure out negative X minus nine equals zero and X plus 14 equals zero. We'll find those two components and we'll have our solution. So add nine to both sides in this first one negative x equals a positive nine. Then because the x is still negative, you have to divide by a negative one so that the x can be positive and nine divided by negative one is negative nine. So there's one solution. And then the second one, you would subtract 14. To move that, we would have x equal to negative 14. So there's two solutions. So what would happen if you plug these numbers in? Well, if you plug in negative nine, you would have four times negative, negative nine minus nine times three times negative nine plus 14 equal to zero. So what this would be is four, this right here turns into zero. So you'd have four times zero times three times that'd be five, but it wouldn't matter because four times zero would be zero. Three times five would be 15. And it doesn't matter because zero times 15 would still be zero. So this piece being zero because of that negative nine turns the entire thing into uh, zero. Okay, and the same thing would happen if you plug in the 14 or the negative 14. You plug the uh, negative 14 in, um, you would just turn this into zero and then that zero being multiplied to the rest of it wouldn't matter. The rest of this wouldn't matter because it's multiplying with zero and uh, thus just becoming zero regardless. All right. So example four, James is given the equation x plus six times x minus 13 equal to zero and asked to find the zeros. 
His solutions are x equal to 6 and x equal to negative 13. Are his solutions correct? Justify your answer. Well, let's solve it ourselves, and then we'll see. So if we solve this ourselves, we would take each piece and set each piece equal to 0. So x plus 6 equal to 0, and x minus 13 equal to 0. So if you solve it, you know, this one you would subtract 6 and have x equal to negative 6. This one you would add 13, and you would have x equal to 13. So these are the right solutions. Uh, James came up with a positive 6, not a negative 6. And he came up with a negative 13, not a positive 13. So James is wrong. He basically did not do what we did. I don't know what James did, but he did not get the right answer. So no, James is wrong. And this right here is proof, the fact that I've worked it out myself. That's it. So um, guys, that's the end of this video. If you still have questions, just let me know. Happy to help. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.